something strange in the neighborhood. So who you gonna call? When there's something strange. Strange, weird, eccentric, sick. That about covers it. In the neighborhood. There's something freaky going on here. Who are you gonna call? Kenner, that's who. With the massive success of 1984's Ghostbusters. Hello, New York! Columbia was eager to cash in on merchandising. The franchise rights alone will make us rich beyond our wildest dreams. But it took two whole years to get the Fab Four who weren't afraid of no ghosts out onto toy shelves. Unlike today with movies that are planned hits, that have all sorts of merchandising hitting stores weeks or even months before the movie is even released, back then movie studios simply hoped for the best. And if a movie caught on at the box office, they'd respond accordingly a few months or a year or two years later to meet demand. We were a lot more patient back then, thanks to not having internet. Something I loved from my childhood. In late 85, Deke Animation put together a pilot promo pitch for ABC Television, which featured the four Ghostbusters wearing their tan flight suits from the movie. Likeness rights hadn't been secured for Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, and Ernie Hudson, though, so some changes were made to the animated versions to differentiate them from their real-life counterparts. Ray was made portly and a redhead, Egon became blonde, and Winston lost the mustache. Not enough of a change was made to Venkman, apparently, who looked too similar to Bill Murray in the promo pilot and was redesigned for the actual series. All of the flight suit colors were changed in the series as well, except for Ray. Seems appropriate since Ray is the heartbeat of the Ghostbusters. Despite the changes, the series became a big hit for ABC television. Another big change was Slimer. The green spud was depicted as a monster in the movie, but on the show he would become the lovable sidekick of the team. In a further attempt to have the real Ghostbusters be its own thing rather than a movie adaption, Ernie Hudson was turned down for the role of Winston, being told he sounded too much like the guy from the movie. And one of the biggest differences from movie to show was the title, The Real Ghostbusters. Turns out Lou Scheimer's filmation owned the rights to the name Ghostbusters. Uh-oh, this looks bad. Which had been a live action show in 1975. <laughs> I'm Spencer! He's Tracy! I'm Kong! Columbia made a deal with Filmation to use the name for the movie in 1984 for $500,000. When it was time to do an animated show, Scheimer tried to work out a deal to have Filmation do the series. Columbia said no thanks, went with the cheaper option of Deke, and stuck a reel in the title to circumvent the rights issues, since Filmation owned the rights to call an animated series simply Ghostbusters which they did themselves in 1986. Let's go, Let's go. Let's go. Not just a dig at Lou Scheimer and Filmation, though. The real part of the title signified a different continuity from the movie. I can smell a bogus a mile away, and those guys are definitely bogus. In a very clever move, the animated series purported itself to be the story of the true Ghostbusters, and the 1984 movie was just that, a movie adapting some of their real adventures. And I'd like to welcome you to the studio. Wow, this is really fantastic. It looks just like the real thing. The meta episode 10, titled Take Two, has the real Ghostbusters act as advisors on the film Ghostbusters. Murray, Aykroyd, and Ramis? Was that a law firm? While Ramis, Aykroyd, Murray, and Hudson don't appear in the episode, a few shots from the film are shown during the premiere at the end of the episode. I'm going to turn over the next card. Along with the real Dr. Venkman's assessment of the casting of Bill Murray to play him. You know, he doesn't look a thing like me. The follow-up, episode 11, titled Citizen Ghost, acts as a direct continuation for the original movie picking up with the Ghostbusters returning to the firehouse soaked in Stay Puft Marshmallow goo after defeating Gozer. We just stopped Gozer the Gazarian from flattening the world, though too late to save our headquarters. Which gives rise to the sinister spectral Ghostbusters. Surrender. It is the only logical thing to do. The episode also shows how the slimy green ghost from the Sedgwick Hotel in the movie 
It's him! It's the one who slimed me at the hotel! Came to be the Ghostbusters hungry, hungry house pet. Just to annoy Peter, what say we call you Slimer? <laughs> Lorenzo Music, most well known as the voice of Garfield the Cat. If I'm not back in an hour, send a banana cream pie after me. Was cast as Dr. Peter Venkman, for a while at least. A piece of cake, Dr. Venkman? I never said that. Even if I said it, I never said it. Maurice LaMarche was cast as Egon, despite being told not to do an impression of Harold Ramis. He did one anyways, and still got the part. I just want you to know that I'm having a wonderful time. Arsenio Hall ended up with the role of Winston for a while. You know, it's times like this when I really like this job. And simply the best. You're simply the best. Voice actor that ever lived. The legendary Frank Welker was cast as the heartbeat of the Ghostbusters, Dr. Ray Stance. It's not really the Easter Bunny. It's not really the Easter Bunny. As well as Slimer. <coughs> but it wasn't just an all-star cast that brought life and laughs to the 13 episodes of season one that aired in the fall and winter of 1986. It's no longer a little known fact, that J. Michael Straczynski helped write the show. It used to be a neat little bit of trivia, like, hey, really, that's cool. But these days, it feels like there should be an asterisk after any real Ghostbusters logo. J. Michael Straczynski worked on this. Yes, the Babylon 5 guy. Still, there may be a few folks out there who still haven't heard, so be sure to let them know in the comments that J. Michael Straczynski worked on the real Ghostbusters. He was story editor and wrote six of the first 13 episodes. Despite the different appearances of the characters, the tone and attitude of the characters is perfectly consistent with the first movie thanks to Mr. Straczynski watching the movie once a week, every week, while working on the show. We've got to go after him. No, we don't. Show me where it says that. Talk about going above and beyond. That's the great beyond. If you know someone who's a huge fan of the first movie and not into cartoons, Put the final episode of season one, called Xmas Marks the Spot, on for them. I told her to keep the cat out of my way. I mean, it's not like the fur won't grow back or anything. Despite being a kid's show, I'm fairly certain that Ghostbusters fan will laugh their butt off because despite not looking right, everything will sound and feel right thanks to J. Michael Straczynski. Spirit, can we not stop flying now? People talk about Ghostbusters 2 failing to replicate the lightning in a bottle of the original movie, but it didn't just fall short of the first movie, it fell short of the real Ghostbusters as well. Both the original movie and the early seasons of the animated series have the same good-natured, fun-loving, dry, cool snarkiness. We have three Class 5 full torso apparitions. Amazing! But what bizarre warped dimension do you think they came from? Possibly New Jersey but with that all-important, genuine heart and soul. Sleep well, kids. We will, now. Thank you. Kind of gives you a warm glow, doesn't it? Plus some genuine spookiness to keep you on the edge of your seat. Knights in armor, flying turtles, my strong chariots, this is nuts! The episode titled When Halloween Was Forever is one of the scariest animated episodes of the 80s. For I am Samhain. I am Halloween. And the pumpkin-headed Sam Hain ranks right up there with movie ghosts like Gozer the Gozerian and Vigo the Carpathian. It is good to know I am remembered. The show even has similar musical montages like the first movie had. Hang on, Winston. I know a shortcut. And despite the new movie, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire being largely influenced by the real Ghostbusters animated series, Mr. Straczynski was oddly left out in the cold in the creative process. Is it possible that they didn't know about his involvement in the animated series? Nah, that's impossible. Before Janine Melnitz was suiting up in Frozen Empire, Melnitz in uniform, yeah! She was busting the Sandman with a proton stream in episode 7. I'm a, a Ghostbuster! And despite being made by Deke, 
The show would go on to be nominated for two Emmys, Outstanding Film Sound Editing in 1987 and Outstanding Animated Program in 1991. Comics would follow in the years to come. Ghostbusters will return after these messages. Ooh. <laughs> um, we now return to the real Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters fans rejoiced that we finally had Ghostbusters toys to investigate paranormal activity at home in 1986. Ready, 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 ready. With their Star Wars line of toys having wrapped up, Kenner was eager to be involved with another box office hit. There weren't a lot of toys available that first year, but it would surprisingly go on to be one of the longest-running Kenner toy lines of all time, lasting from 1986 all the way to 1991. The initial lineup of Kenner Ghostbusters collectibles included four figures, two ghosts, an unlicensed nuclear accelerator, and a pair of plush toys. Check out the website thetoycollectorsguide.com for a clean and concise layout of every year of real Ghostbusters offerings, complete with value, scarcity factor, and notes of interest. Models! Why, I, I they dumb looking! <laughs> Each of the four Ghostbusters figures included a translucent ghost and a proton pack with neutrino wand, which could be attached to the pack or to the figure's arm. Then let him take this! The pack could be attached to the figure's back and had a permanent, non-removable proton stream in the wand that could be twisted to simulate the same kind of havoc and destruction as witnessed at the Sedgwick Hotel in the movie. Eat protons, fella! <laughs> While the packs and the wands are all the same mold, they had different colored proton streams to differentiate them. The figures themselves were the standard Kenner design of five points of articulation, although they were a bit taller than Kenner's Star Wars figures. It's showtime, folks! Starting with the heart and soul of the Ghostbusters is Dr. Ray Stance, who included the purple rapper ghost. <laughs> His tan flight suit resembles the color of the movie flight suits the most. He's a little more portly than his movie counterpart, the svelte Canadian stud, Dan Aykroyd. Suck in the guts, guys, with the Ghostbusters. Ray's stream was orange, somewhat matching his hair, enthusiastic and optimistic. Wow, look at this stuff, this is great! He's not just afraid of no ghost, he's excited to meet them. Before busting them, that is. <laughs> Almost as brilliant as Egon, and serves as an interpreter to Egon for the other two. I just wish I knew what he was planning. I think I know. And if I'm right, it's brilliant! The engineer of the Ghostbusters. He's the one that puts Egon's theories into practice. Takes what he does very seriously, but hasn't lost the inner child inside either. Wow! It's Dopey Dog! I used to have one of these! Despite seeing some of the most horrific, supernatural images anyone has ever witnessed, doesn't let them steal his joy, and still loves cartoons and stuffed animals. Someone whose thoughts, actions, and general state of mind are identical to, say, a six-year-old. Oh, dopey. Maybe he's onto something. My name is Dr. Egon Spengler. I'm a scientist. Dr. Egon Spengler had a light blue flight suit and a red proton stream to match the frames of his glasses. He came with the yellow gulper ghost, which could be fitted over Egon's head. The man with the plan, even when he's terrified beyond the capacity for rational thought. Let's try something else. Something real ingenious, right? Something real scientific, right? Real tippy-toe. When the natural becomes supernatural and ceases to make sense, Egon's logic usually ensures that the containment unit will be a little more crowded that evening. Have no fear, Dr. Venkman and his staff are here. Dr. Peter Venkman was the face man of the group. I hate to say it, but you look marvelous. He had a dark brown flight suit, a green proton stream to match his eyes, and came with the blue grabber ghost. <laughs> What he lacked in Egon and Ray's scientific brilliance, he made up for in being a used car salesman. Sorry, gentlemen, but my public calls. Perhaps we can continue this later. Ta. The businessman of the group always trying to ensure the profits keep coming in. 
Okay, let's earn some money. Has most of the best one-liners, like Bill Murray in the movie. Yo, telegram. And like his movie counterpart, often ends up doing the dirty work no one else is comfortable or capable of handling. And then there was one. And Mr. Winston Zedmore had a light blue flight suit, a little lighter than Egon's, a yellow beamed proton stream, and the orange chomper ghost. <laughs> Winston was the everyman, just a good down-to-earth dude who was just trying to pay his bills. Like my dad always said, we learn by doing. Let's get it! While they left out the movie version's spiritual beliefs... Do you believe in God? Never met him. Yeah, well, I do. And I love Jesus' style, you know. He does get more character development than the others throughout the course of the show. He likes to read, and he's descended from a powerful African bloodline. He's the most physically fit of the group, and more proficient with the hard-to-control proton stream than the others. He's got the tools, he's got the talent. Arguably the bravest of the group, considering he doesn't have the paranormal or scientific experience of Ray or Egon to rationalize some of the hauntings he encounters, or the silver tongue of Peter to try to talk his way out of trouble. Remember, if you're not afraid, he can't hurt you. We'll remember! You didn't have to imagine hauntings for the frightless four to bust in 86. Somebody's seen a ghost? Or borrow apparitions and free-floating phantasms from the other toy lines. In addition to the mini ghosts included with each figure, Kenner released two large ghosts for the containment unit in 86. Let's kick some ectoplasm! Slimer got his first figure that year, although he wasn't referred to as Slimer. The card lists him as Green Ghost. You know, the green guy, the little spud, the, uh, whatever he is. And the hungry bugger included some food. <laughs> a pizza, a steak, and a slice of watermelon to chomp on. Yum! No, 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 no. Ah. Slimer! Before he was the cute, cuddly, slimy mascot of the group, he was terrorizing the Sedgwick Hotel in the movie and leaving Dr. Venkman feeling funky in a bad way. Yuck! I've been slimed! Yuck! Unlike the spud shape he had in the movie as well as the animated series, this figure has a tail, like he had in the promo pilot. He's also got a nasty expression, like in the promo pilot and in the movie. So the green ghost may have been intended to be an antagonist on the animated series before they came up with the name and persona of the lovable Slimer. He's got three points of articulation, both arms and tail can twist. The other ghost released that year? No! It can't be! What is it? It can't be! What did you do, Ray? It's the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. A grossly undersized one at that. A great representation of the movie Stay Puft, but the main thing Stay Puft had going for him was that he was huge. A 7-inch figure that isn't much bigger than the Ghostbusters themselves is pretty underwhelming if it's meant to be used with the rest of the toy line, but on its own, not a bad rendition at all. If you wanted to do some life-size ghostbusting, Kenner also released the Electronic Ghost Zapper. It featured slides that could be inserted to project haunting images of ghosts accompanied with sounds. We're being watched! Fire ghost zappers! Turn to high frequency! And a pair of plushies that Ray no doubt had in his locker at the firehouse. The green ghost, more of a puppet than a plush doll. And this was more like it. Trouble. Big, big trouble. A 15-inch plush Stay Puff Marshmallow Man with glow-in-the-dark eyes and mouth. Over twice as big as the Stay Puffed figure, this one seemed a better fit for the boys to bust. If you could get them to stay standing, that is. And that's it for the first year of real Ghostbusters merchandise. Thank you! Thank you! Oh, you're too kind. A rather thin year that tested the waters to see if the huge success of the film two years prior had endured and could translate into toy sales. And by all accounts, enough of a success that justified a follow-up year with a few more offerings. The nice thing about the real Ghostbusters toy line is that it's not a deep rabbit hole that you can get lost in like G.I. Joe and Transformers. Back in a while with the follow-up year filled with more frightening figures, ghoulish ghosts, viscous vehicles, and paranormal playsets. My heart can't take all the excitement. Till then, throw a thought below, scan the like, and blast subscribe.
Alright, okay, it's shout out time. Thank you to everyone who goes above and beyond to support the channel. Starting first with the Patreon tribe. Thank you for providing the channel Patreon Proton Power. In order of newest members to most vintage, Armin, Scammy G, Chaka, Sergio, Steven, Alexander, Brent, Griff Pool, John, Seth, Gridiron Studios, Chase, Eboss, Michael, Chaka, Ryan, Justin, Kelly, Matthew, Scorpio2, Bobby, Nevitz, Christopher, Ninja, Bear, Hans, Alley Devil, Bill, Tom Ericus, Ray Ray, Joseph, Christopher, Scott, Sean, Greg, Stephen, David, Hubert, Jack, Stephanie, Kennedy, Ashley, Matthew, TJ, Stuart, Alex, Stuart, Mark, Anthony, Professor Tim, Joshua, Robert, Derek, Jason, Gaz, Linda, Christopher, Jason, Quanoman, Michael, Bob, Audie, Sean, Avery, Obi, Mate, Micah, Mark, Ford Lover 68, Steve, Carlos, Jason, Maddie C, Michael, Adam, Jace, Tristan, Melvor, Anthony, Brian, Jason, Stray Fox, Cameron, Dane, Clave, Iron Lords Podcast, Sean, John, Christopher, Krishna, Gold, Mr. Tinman Pin, Matt, Judson, Rad, John B, John S, Brian, Dominic, Adam, Scott, Eric, ZZ, Chris, Scott, and Luke. Much appreciation, good brothers and sisters. And thanks to the channel members. Let's see those custom Ghostbusters symbol emojis in the comments. Thank you, Micah, Gaz, Dave, Armor Deep, Smarten Up, Marcus, Dynamite, Stephanie, Tom, Scott, Tim, Sasquatch Man, Sergio, Bing Bong Toys, Destron Designs, Bo, and Nathan. Thank you, good night, good luck, God bless, and Nerd Mistake.